Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Let's have a look at a game that was played on March 19th, 2021. This is the game between international master Jesus Duque on the white end and Hans Niemann. Niemann in January of 2021 was awarded the Grand Master title. So for this over the board game, we have a newly minted Grand Master Niemann. Now as of late, nearly every Hans Niemann game seems to be thrown under the microscope. And on a very recent note, Several of them were drawn to my attention for, uh, well, because of their high degree of accuracy. This particular one stuck out to me. I'd like to share this one with you, share a tale of the tape at the end, and share my two cents about this game. So let's hop to it. It's an E4-E5 based game, Ray Lopez. Closed, Ray Lopez. It's a 28 move game. White. Uh, is now going to grab a pawn. Black is offering up a pawn with d5. There goes the e pawn. And after queen to d6, what is black essentially saying with this line? Where's the compensation for being down a pawn? Black is staring at the queen side and asking, where's your development? Now, I have fast forwarded to this moment in the game because it has already been seen many times before. The most popular reply is rook to e1. If that move was played in the game, rook a to e8 or c5 are good continuations. In this game, white kind of flirts with danger, staying opposite the bishop, rook e4 on board. Black follows with c5. That pawn wasn't doing anything wonderful on c7. Why not create a pawn duo? From here, knight d2. This is an inaccuracy. Black has a strong move. Let's see if he can spot it. Black to move, what is best? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, here we go. C4. The bishop's trapped? Not quite. White can take on C4 to save the bishop, but after this capture, now the D-file's opened. Black has this combo. Knight C3. What's happening here a lot? The knight is pinned to the queen. There's a double attack against the rook, as well as a fork against the majors. The result of this c4 knight c3 combo is that black will be winning the exchange and the only question is how many pawns will white track down in the process in the game c5 is played considered best however is to capture the knight and after bishop takes rook to essentially wipe out all black queenside pawns and enter this imbalanced state knight three pawns versus the rook not the healthiest three pawns, but still, it's a ball game ahead. Okay, in this game, it's c5. That's considered a blunder, the only blunder of the game, and black maintains a, a winning advantage from here on out. Queen d8. Not just to any square. Black is maintaining the pin while staying out of rook takes bishop. This rook takes bishop shot. For example, if queen d7, white would now be winning taking the bishop, hitting the queen. Queen d8. That is best. Only at this point, the knight is tracked down. From here, bishop takes rook. Bishop a3. So in this case, it's now a knight and two pawns versus the rook. Bishop b7. Makes a lot of sense to stay trained on this, on the heart of the kingside structure. I questioned whether... You know, do you go to b7 or c6? Makes a lot of sense to go to b7. There is now an additional square available for the queen to form a battery one day on c6. Okay, from here it's c4. Now nice move b4. Not just giving a pawn away for any little reason. Bishop b7 is the reply. If the pawn was captured... Black would go on to track down a bishop. This guy is now squashed. Ouch. All right, black sees, or white sees that, excuse me. Plays to b2. And now black pursues some exchanges. Dark square bishops are off. Queen rook goes to the queen file. King rook to the king file. And now mate one threat. Targeting c5 as well. Black has no interest in tracking down this pawn, though. He's going for more. A5. Bishop is short on squares. C3. 
b takes c, bishop c2, and how do you improve from here? Rook on the 7th, attacking the bishop. Rook c1, and one final move of this game. See if you could spot it. Black to move, what is best? Well, I guess there are several good moves, but move played in the game is, here we go. Rook takes bishop, and white resigns. What's the story here if the game continued? If rook takes rook, there would be rook e1. And the queen is stuck. She's pinned. She has the primary responsibility to defend g2. The game is over. The queen is lost. Queen takes rook. That's mate. Queen will fall. No, no hope for team white at this point. So a 28 mover. Let's shift over to the tail the tape on this one. There we go. And what to say? Uh, looking at the inaccuracies, mistakes, blunders, inaccuracies, the first mistake, or excuse me, the first inaccuracy is really the main one to look at once we're down in this area. Who really cares? It's still going to be a win. So that first inaccuracy, rook to e4, not a fan of that one. The first mistake, that one really... Shouldn't really focus on this one. The blunder where it was given away. No turning back after that c5 move. Instead of immediately capturing the knight on c3. So, in the end, we have average sunny pawn loss. 42 for white. 10 for black. And accuracies. 89% versus 97%. My thoughts. I think that this is a very deceptive game. Uh, as I mentioned, several games were drawn were brought to my attention this was one of them and i think that this one could be very misleading if you only stare at the math and the numbers here because the chess is uh in my estimation the moves played in this game by black were moves you could see played by a strong blitz player i could see every move played in this game played in a, in a, in a blitz time control and this was a much longer time controlled game there wasn't a single red flag in my estimation with this particular game. So I, I saw that this one was out there. I wanted to uh, kind of maybe, yeah, I'm sharing my, my two cents here. I think it's a, it could very easily be misleading if you just look at the numbers with this one because the chess itself, there wasn't anything uh, special. There was a one little trick with c4, knight c3, and everything was kind of smooth sailing from there. No red flags in my estimation. Anyhow, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing some of your own thoughts in the comments section below. Feel free, as usual, to leave them, and hopefully you took a thing or two away from this video. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.